Okay, question 10, um, it says, fill in the blank for each reaction below with the most appropriate particle. Um, okay. Um, and to use conservation laws. Okay. Um, it's not telling me Um, so I'm going to go in this way. Uh, whenever an interaction is possible by electromagnetic or uh, strong interaction, I'm gonna go with that. Only when it becomes impossible to make that happen, I will um, use the last resort of using weak interaction. So we'll have a strangeness of violating thing. For A, if I don't want any strangeness of violating interaction, then, um, then I need anti-neutron here. Uh, that'll, so to indicate that I prefix the particle symbol with bar, so it should be bar and, um, let me just make sure that it works. Okay, um, so it, it should be anti-neutron in order to be um, counterpart to, to that, that ha can happen by electromagnetic or strong interaction. Okay, proton and proton going into proton plus. Okay, I have two baryons coming in. So far, two baryons. So uh, this is where drawing Feynman diagram helps. Um, you know, uh, let me do that. I'm gonna change the plan. And for this question, let me draw a Feynman diagram because this is actually a question where Feynman diagrams help you uh, get the right uh, answers. So uh, for A, I won't draw it since it was uh, relatively easy just to, uh, um, ju just to with the uh, uh, particle to particle consideration. Um, starting with a B, what you have to start to take into account is re potential rearrangement of quarks into different uh, bound state. So, um, so we have proton and another proton colliding, producing. So one of the protons, I guess, doesn't do anything, but in the energy of the collision, there's enough energy to produce a quark antiquark pair, some of which will bind into lambda zero particle. And um, there is something else remaining here. Now, I can tell you that this remaining thing, it won't be another baryon because we have our maximum limit of baryons. So this has to be a meson. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, which meson? And the most useful tool here is really accounting for all the quarks. So for the two protons coming in, I have up, up and then down quark. And um, for the second proton as well, same quark content, up, up and down. Um, and since the outgoing set has one proton in it, I guess for um, easiness sake, I can just say, that up quark goes into up and down quark goes into down. Um, what will happen though is um, out of the energy of the collision, maybe some of these are emitting a gluon, for example, or a photon, but more likely gluon uh, at high energies. And this gluon is decaying into a particle-antiparticle pair. And I need to figure out how to arrange that. So, um, well, that particle antiparticle pair have better be strange and anti strange quark because I know um, I have one strange quark here, lambda zero. Um, it has one strange quark, and I think it's the uh, rest of the quarks should be up and down. So, uh, looking at here, one up one down and one strange is spoken for. Oh, so I guess one remaining up and um, and the anti-strange quark will be pairing up. So this is how it should kind of end up at. Yeah, so this is gonna be kind of complicated line drawing. Bear with me here. So I have up, um, up, down and strange. That's gonna add up to lambda naught. And I have this one of quark that's gonna 
go over, join with this anti strange uh, quark. And I have an up quark uh, that used to be part of the other proton. So I need to figure out what uh, particle that is. I think I have a feeling that's a, a K plus meson. Let me double check to be sure. So K, K plus is up and anti strange. Yeah. So that ought to be a K plus, K meson. And, and there could be, you know, more particles, but if there are more particles that involves more vertexes, it's not the, the uh, lowest order uh, interaction. Okay, uh, I'll keep going here with the C, uh, pi minus plus, oh, yeah, I think I'm just gonna start drawing Feynman diagrams uh, with all this because um, I'm starting to see strange quarks. They move, they are produced, they move around, they have to be, placed somewhere and the best way to organize them is with a Feynman diagram. So pi minus plus a proton goes into sigma minus plus something. Uh, sigma minus is a baryon or with one minus one strangeness or one strange quark for it to have a charge of minus one. Um, it should have down, down and strange quarks. Okay, uh, pi minus, it should have an up and down quark anti quark. And thinking through all the combinations, the only one that will work and give me charge of minus one is anti up and down. A proton is again up, up and down. Okay, um, so I have K meson plus neutron going into lambda baryon plus something. Um, and I think I'm starting to remember all the quark contents. New, uh, the negative kaon has a quark content of anti-up and strange. Neutron has up, down, and down. Uh, the neutral lambda has up, down, and strange, plus whatever. Let me draw them. Uh, I'll draw neutron first, up, down, and down. Um, the, Negative K on has anti up and strange. Um, so in the outgoing side, I have, I need um, up, down, and a strange quark. Oh, I think uh, basically this down quark and this strange quark can uh, swap positions. Um, so something like this could happen. Uh, so these are the spectator quarks, not doing anything. Uh, and this strange quark can join this. And if I have up, down, strange, that's gonna give me the combination that can be uh, lambda baryon. And I have two remaining quarks, down and anti up. So they should join together somehow. And when they do, the combination looks like a, a negative pi up. Yeah, uh, I think this is nicely said. And notice how I'm not drawing any of the interaction lines and uh, technically there should be a bunch of gluon lines. I'm just not drawing them because we don't need to see them to um, enforce conservation laws that we know. And these gluon interactions are super complicated. So uh, I'm not pretending to go into that detail. So I'm just gonna let that be, uh, write down pi minus, do a quick check of uh, charges to make sure the charge is conserved. Angular momentum is conserved, spin zero, one half, one half, zero. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, tau, uh, this one I'm, well, I'm not gonna draw a Feynman diagram for because I've drawn one for decay of muon in the lecture. This is basically the same with the muon replaced by a tau lepton. And really the only thing that changes is the, um, so what would have been the muon antineutrino here, uh, if this were muon, it now becomes tau antineutrino. So it'd be uh, tau, wait, no. Neutrino, tau, and it's uh, anti-neutrino, so there should be a bar. Okay, uh, neutral, 
neutrino and proton um, into neutron and oh um, so yeah this is one of the reactions used for detection of uh, neutrino actually uh, in this process the neutrino turns into positron um, uh, let me draw the Feynman diagram for this one that's a that's a fun one so uh, I'll, okay <laughs> we're over time but I think that's a good last Feynman diagram to draw and this actually involves a, a crossed reaction. So you could kind of look at this like a inverse beta decay, except you cross the neutrino or yeah, cross the neutrino over to the other side, turning it into an antiparticle. That's um, one of the ways of uh, generating different possibilities for a particular nuclear or particle reaction. So I have a neutrino plus a proton, which has quark content of up, up, and down, turning into neutron plus neutron, which has quark content up, down, and down, a positron. So two of the quarks remain the same. They won't be doing anything. They'll be just the spectator quarks, one up quark and one down quark. So really the reaction that we are drawing for is an up quark into down quark reaction. So let me just to draw those particles for the sake of simplicity. So I have an up quark coming in and I have an anti-electron neutrino going out. Now, before you are tempted to join these in a weak vertex, note that this is not one of the allowed vertexes because you could have a lepton turning into other kind of lepton or a quark turning into other kind of quark, but you can't have a quark turning into a lepton. That's not allowed. So let me just finish drawing the outgoing particles. So outgoing, I have a down quark that's outgoing and I have a positron that's outgoing. And I think once you draw this, then uh, how they are connected it becomes more uh, evident. Up quark turns into down quark, emitting a W boson in the process and the neutrino or the electron anti-neutrino turns into positron uh, emitting or absorbing up, uh, W boson in the process. So, so this is the Feynman diagram. It's pretty nice and clean. Um, it might have been one of the ones I drew in the lecture where if I didn't draw one, then this uh, you can find the analogs of this in um, say uh, electron positron collision where no particles were actually produced uh, in an elastic electron positron collision. So, so okay, I think that's it. Uh, let's see if I got them all right. Uh, okay, I didn't. <laughs>